in today's video we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern taking a look at that upcoming major arctic blast that is coming up now in about four or five days from now this will bring the coldest air of the season as well as snowfall chances for the mid-atlantic northeast ohio valley great lakes north central states and even some of the northwestern states will continue to see their snow threats but the surprising stuff is the furthest east well, there is general thunder or general storms that are yet happening around the nation as well that need to be discussed so we're going to be talking about that as well as the temperature pattern as a whole so let's just dive into the current conditions first things first and we see the continuation of what we were talking about yesterday a lot of storminess here for oregon Northern California, and this does to some extent extend into Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming here. We do see over the north central states, we have this low right here, which is bringing about a lot of precipitation to the north of it for North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and even parts of Michigan. And then there is some passing showers here for the northeast or perhaps in the Ohio Valley as well. Let's zoom into this western one, and as you can see, there is some moderate to heavy precipitation moving uh, from basically southwest to northeast here across northern California into a lot of Oregon here all along that coastline. We're seeing moderate to heavy rainfall set up. And as we kind of generally head eastward from here, uh, what we see more so of is light to moderate kind of passing showers with this one for areas further uh, east in Oregon as well as areas in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Although there's a heavier pocket down here near I-94 that is passing through. Uh, as we take a look at the north central states, though, we can see these are more light to moderate in nature for the Dakotas, Minnesota, especially the northern half, the northern like fourth of Wisconsin, and then the upper peninsula of Michigan mostly, but also the northern areas of the lower peninsula are seeing precipitation as well. And similarly to our other one, we do have a heavier pocket kind of set up here, and this is along Route 2 there from uh, Crookston to Bagley. Um... I'm not even going to try to pronounce this town's name. Uh, Bemidji. Bemidji. I don't know how you say that. Uh, but it is heading that way along Route 2. And that will be headed towards the Grand Rapids area eventually as well. So overnight expect some heavier showers across that corridor of northern Minnesota. Uh, again, looking at the northern areas here in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. We do have some passing light to moderate showers moving down from Canada sort of towards the southeast across these states and this might begin to get more coverage later on uh, and maybe move, make a move towards the coastline although it looks like it's kind of drying up as it reaches close to the coast for now we'll see what happens with that now obviously not too eventful on the current conditions so let's go ahead and move on to what is upcoming and as we take a look here at the new 6 to 10 day temperature outlook from the national weather service and this is as of november 4th it's gone ahead and done exactly as we predicted. Uh, this map did not look this cold initially, but they have really, really spread the colder air over these eastern states. Now even going with the dark blues for the east coast for the 10th through 14th time frame. Of course, we do expect our cooldown to mostly be from the 9th through the 11th. So we are seeing uh, some of it, you know, cut out of this graphic first off, that being the 9th. And also... Uh, we're getting some days in there like the 13th and 14th that are perhaps milder. So at its peak for the 9th, 10th, maybe even into the 11th time frame, it will look a lot colder than this even, I suspect. Looking at the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook, things get a little bit less conclusive. We see neutral to slightly below average temperatures for both coastlines with primarily warmer temperatures over the central states. Uh, and don't know if I agree with this fully. We'll explain a little bit later on. Uh, as we move for the 12th through 18th time frame, I do suspect that a lot of our colder air might be centered over the west and central states, and a lot of this warmth might be pushed further to the east here. Uh, I don't think we're getting a good reflection of that on this graphic, but of course it is the longer range, so you get kind of differing opinions a lot more as we move further into the pattern, so it shouldn't come as a huge surprise or anything. Looking at the past three days of temperatures as of today uh, maybe we'll do the five day let's take a look at this because this is going to encompass all of november plus halloween day so the final day of october but it has been a purely warmer than normal pattern out west with cooler than normal conditions over mostly the southeast and deep south but really the east as a whole if we were to take the average of it has just been cooler than normal overall 
looking towards the upcoming pattern and we'll start out here with the precipitation kind of just going over the storminess but of course we can kind of track these lines the colored lines to get an idea of where there's some troughs and ridges and for now it does appear like there's a ridge over the west and central states and a little bit of a trough over the east but i mean looking at this it doesn't wave too much as we move towards tomorrow afternoon on wednesday the 6th some interesting things begin to happen the West deals with a lot more storminess all the way from California, northward through Nevada, Oregon, Idaho, Washington, and even those western areas of Canada. And then we see an eastern storm as well. This is coming in the form of a 994 over New York State. Some snowfall showers for higher elevation areas there in the northeast. Outside of that, you're looking at a cooler rainfall event for the Great Lakes into the mid-Atlantic northeast areas. Uh, clearly, your jet stream by this point is beginning to look a lot more extreme with that trough type pattern in the east, ridge in the west, but this is still a moderate trough at best. Nothing too crazy yet. Looking towards Thursday here on the 6th of November, it's a lot of the same, much quieter. The jet stream is kind of wavy, but not, not too crazy. We see the northwest is the center of a lot of our activity here, which has been the case for a while now. Uh, it's as we move towards uh, Friday the 7th that some moving pieces begin to, well, move. We see our 992 centered right over the Great Lakes there, which is usually an indicative sign of some cooler air headed eastward, especially when coupled with a cold front, which we can see underneath there. Uh, a little bit of a drier warm front probably set up in there as there looks to be some lifted warmth to the east, but it's not very extreme at all. Maybe not even noticeable to the, you know, feel if you move outside. That's going to pull a lot of cooler air in. This does look to have the components to be a thunderstorm event, maybe even severe weather event for some of these southern territories. Time will tell if we end up seeing that or not, but this is definitely looking to be a bit of a setup for something like that. The northwest hasn't slowed down too much as far as activity. There's still snowfall for the higher elevations and still rainfall for the lower elevations here. As we move towards Saturday here on the 8th of November, this is when things get crazier. We see this ridge building for the West Coast and this trough building in the central states, lifting off a little bit as you move eastward. As we kind of just follow these red lines, there's clearly some lift here, which means for this area, I'll draw the line, but east of that line that I just drew, the further east you are, the warmer it is, and the further towards this line to the west you are, the cooler it is here. And the opposite is true in the west. It's much warmer where these lines bow up, and it's much cooler where they're lowering down into these areas. But our bottled up Arctic air is all right here over the northern plains, upper Midwest, and Great Lakes here by Saturday here on the 8th. Moving towards Sunday on the 9th. Again, we don't get this day on that 6 to 10 day outlook from the National Weather Service, but look at how extreme this jet stream is. We can take a look at the kind of north america view we'll have to go back to the 12z model run and get ourselves back here right there perfect look at this guys this is absolutely crazy we see this ridge all the way up almost to alaska then this trough just descends down all the way into the deep south and then wraps back up really really interesting but you can clearly tell there is mild air shooting up the western seaboard of north america and this Arctic flow is just funneling straight into this area uh, that heads straight towards the central and eastern states. That is your pattern right there. This is an extreme, extreme look uh, on the model run. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, I really wanted to show you how far this warmth goes up the west coast of Canada because it's almost touching uh, Alaska there. That is absolutely crazy. That ridge and you get an equally strong trough to the east of it. Going back to the United States view, uh, we can see that we do have a low, as we suspected on the east end of the jet stream. It's a little bit more progressive on this model run, though. And what I mean is that it's moving through the jet stream quicker than anticipated. So what we end up getting in this instance, if this occurs, is some snowfall for Canada as well as the upper Midwest and Great Lakes here from this. But this low is over land, so this is way too far to the west for the northeast or mid-Atlantic to see any sort of substantial snowfall from this thing. We do, however, overnight begin to see a lot more of this activity kind of lag behind in the cooler air, and this ends up giving us some pretty intense lake effect snowfall occurring and also some snow showers just generally moving across states like Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, even into Kentucky, Tennessee. 
West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, as it's kind of moving down into the more mid-Atlantic states, especially the high elevations. And as we kind of just move this on a few hours, this is as we're reaching uh, 7 p.m. here on Monday, November uh, 10th here. And what we're seeing is some snow showers reaching into the more central regions of North Carolina and Virginia. Still hilly, but not mountainous by any means. So that is truly impressive. Uh, and we do have a coastal low. It's just well offshore, and that's likely attributing to a lot of this precipitation. If we got a more major low along the East Coast, we'd be watching the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast as a whole for potentially something. And I don't want to get too crazy here, but this is what we're actually talking about. With how cold this Arctic air is, uh, you can imagine that we're in a mid to late December pattern, not a, not a mid-November pattern. So... What's possible in mid to late December is, in theory, going to be a lot more possible in this pattern than a typical November 11th. As we move past that to Tuesday the 11th, as I mentioned, you start to see this thing moving out. We can tell that this warmth is trying to spread horizontally, and it's kind of shoving that colder air out. So it's moving eastward and kind of up. It's following suit. As we move towards Wednesday the 12th, it's almost fully moved out. And we do end up with kind of a secondary trough. It's nowhere near as major, but we can tell that we're still descending into the east here. Very little to no precipitation over the United States. Thursday is a lot of the same except out west where we have a major system arriving right here. Rain and snowfall, mostly snowfall for the Sierra Nevada mountains there as you can see, but rainfall everywhere else from the southern tip of California to the northern tip of Washington. So the entire West Coast seeing precipitation from this one perhaps Thursday on the 13th, still not even 10 days away. Uh, by Friday, what we start to see is this storm brings a lot of colder air with it, a lot of Rocky Mountain snowfall, but also this warmer air that was over the West is progressively moving eastward. Everything's kind of moving from west to east, and that forces this colder air to start to move out as well. It's left over over the eastern states, so a very progressive left to right pattern. Essentially, Saturday the 15th, that storm system that was over the west coast begins to take off for the plains and midwest here. Uh, a lot of precipitation underneath on this cold front side of things. Again, could be looking at thunderstorm chances in here. Can't roll it out, even severe weather, uh, just because of the dynamics we have at play here. The northwest, very, very snowy, especially for the high elevations for Saturday the 15th. This is when you should start to take it with a grain of salt, though, this point and moving forward. So let's take a look at Sunday here on the 16th, where we do have a low over the Great Lakes now. Uh, and a little bit of a positive sign if you're looking for cold in the east later on here. We do have warming happening along the southwest coast. And typically, that's the beginning sign that this colder air is on the move eastward. And uh, generally, we're going to see everything kind of just progress Again, from left to right, similarly to the pattern we saw before. And as we move towards Monday on the 17th, perhaps we take another step in that direction. As again, this trough is centered a little bit further to the east. This is that low developing along the jet stream we were talking about earlier. This is an intense system, 988. We get really, really intense thunderstorms here again throughout the deep south and a lot of like the lower Midwest areas of the United States. We do end up with some snow chances here for the northern plains and upper Midwest from this as well. So as we head overnight, we see some of this happening for Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin there. And that one eventually moves out, bringing with it a very, very, very intense cold front right here. So again, thunderstorm chances and even severe weather chances are prevailing here at the end of this model run as well with that system. And then we basically end things off on that note with some warmth building for the West Coast, but this colder air still wants to be centered over maybe the central states, if not even further west than that. We almost get more of a southeast ridge type pattern setting up here on the very late portion of this model run. Total precipitation. Uh, we do see here in the Northwest high amounts of precipitation. And a lot of the east is dealing with high amounts of precipitation as well compared to normal, with the exception of this kind of coastal mid-Atlantic and northeast area. So again, the anomalies, this area kind of struggles along that northeastern coastline, but we do see a lot of areas that are further inland seeing above average precipitation, which is really incredible news. The northwest is also above average in general. 
Looking at the total snowfall, we see monstrous amounts for the wet mountainous west. Much, much more than we've seen in previous model runs for the Cascades, Sierra Nevadas, and the Rockies. We also see some plains in Midwest snowfall again from that system at the very tail end of the model run. And then we see some snowfall for the 10th, 11th, 12th up for the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, especially the Appalachian Mountain Range, then the Northeast, especially the Appalachian Mountain Range. And I said uh, 10th, 11th, 12th, but really you're looking at maybe the 8th through the 12th time frame for potential snowfall because as this cold is just initially moving into these areas, it could be very potent and it could result in lake effect snowfall there for the Great Lakes region. Now, temperatures. We are cooler right now. Uh, and we do expect to stay that way for uh, the day on Wednesday the 5th, maybe not. Uh, we see the northeast actually seeing a little bit left, but we actually warm up right around this time frame later on on Wednesday. Uh, but for Thursday, we see that second more minor kind of cool down move in for the mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, northeast here. Uh, Friday, that goes ahead and moves out. We start to warm again. Saturday the 8th, we're warm again along the east with, again, the cooler conditions beginning for the northern plains, upper Midwest, and Great Lakes. That's why we're not ruling out some snowfall starting as early as the 8th for these areas. Another thing is you might notice that the west is extremely warm. This is what's going to make all of this possible. Uh, and as this moves in, again, snowfall showers might accompany it. Uh, Sunday here on the, the 9th of November, more extreme cold air moving in. Uh, your blues are 1 to 10 degrees below normal. Your greens are 10 to 15. And then your purplish blues, like we see for the plains in Midwest, is 15 to 25 degrees, what is normal. Out west, monstrous warmth. This Arctic blast moves in in a hurry. It's very, very intense. Again, 15 to 25 degrees below normal in these purplish blues. And the magentas are 25 degrees or more below normal. For the Smoky Mountains there in North Carolina and Tennessee, you might notice it's glowing pink. Uh, you can't see it on your screen, but I can on mine. On the bottom right, it tells me what the most below normal is on anywhere on this particular screen that we can see. And I can tell you right now, it's in that bright pink. And it says negative 38.7, which means 38.7 degrees below normal is somewhere in there in the Smoky Mountains, according to this model. Absolutely crazy. That is just a ridiculous number. That's probably putting you at temperatures that are colder than your peak winter temperatures. So that is a ridiculous departure from what's typical, especially for this time of year. That is going to mean that a lot of your Appalachian Mountain areas, even though it's not typical, might be in for some potential snowfall even this early in the season. As we move towards Tuesday, the 11th, it's not much warmer. Very, very cool, especially the further east you go. Wednesday, it's a little bit left over for the east coast, but it's already coming to an end. We do see another cooldown kind of come to save the day for Thursday the 13th into Friday the 14th. And then by Saturday the 15th, that one's moving out. We do warm up in a pretty big way for that late weekend, Sunday the 16th, Monday the 17th, Tuesday the 18th there especially, and even to the end of the model run where we're kind of left at this big question mark of what's to come next, but it's the end of the model run, so I can't tell you. Looking at the GFS model here, Again, we are under cooldown number one, cooldown number two moves in, cooldown number three is extremely, extremely intense. We don't quite get those magentas and pinks, but we do enter into that kind of purplish blue where we deal with 15 to 25 degrees below normal. A lot of the deep south, the Appalachian Mountain Range, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, all kind of dealing with these very, very far below normal temperatures. Again, we try to warm up, but we actually see a second cooldown move in. And then on this model, we see a third one for the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th. And right at the end of the model run, it looks like we're warming up. Uh, but I will say it still looks warm along the west here. And I do think that this is maybe another Arctic blast trying to move down into the central and eastern states. So maybe on this model, this wouldn't even be very long lived, this warmth. So much, much, much more longevity with the colder air on this GFS model. But the European model packs a little bit more of a punch with that cooldown that's happening from the 8th through the 12th so we'll see which one ends up being correct but uh really really impressive cold on the way regardless of which one of these is correct so uh yeah really intense we're gonna have more information coming up on this as well as the pattern that follows after uh because we do upload every single day so be sure to subscribe you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video